That's People. right. Com. Mm-hmm. Mm. Barack Obama reveals he tested positive for COVID-19. Oh, no. Quote, grateful to be vaccinated and boosted. Boosted. They played the Obama card. See yeah. what it says here. Barack Obama has tested positive for COVID-19. The former president, 60, announced his diagnosis in a statement shared on Facebook and Twitter Sunday afternoon. Quote, just tested positive for covid I had a scratchy throat for a couple of days when I'm feeling fine otherwise, he wrote, no, noting that he and his wife, Michelle Obama, are, quote, grateful to be vaccinated and boosted. Mm, Barack mm. Also, uh, also confirmed that Michelle, 58, has tested negative. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, quote, it's a good reminder that even as cases go down, you should get vaccinated and boosted if you haven't already to help prevent more serious symptoms and giving COVID to others, Barack oh, urged. Whoopsies, Barack. Whoopsies. Some message. fake news there, Barack Obama. Yeah. Well, Doesn't keep you from spreading the disease, Barack. Yeah. Oh, hate it when these public figures spread fake news. <laughs> Did he get banned from Twitter for that? <laughs> not yet. No, not yet. Uh, Barack okay. has been vocal about the importance of getting vaccines since COVID-19 vaccines became available. Mm -hmm. uh, the politician who got vaccinated on March. Uh, yeah, we don't need the rest of the propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> we can get the point. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of which, Barack Obama uh, should be happy to hear. You have more on that? I'm just going to say, very interesting that they played it now. Like, is, it must be because... Everyone's attention's on the war, and nobody yeah, well, cares the, about the vaccine. So the signal—it's a good signal when it comes to you know what, what we're getting in the news. You know, you talk about signal and noise. Yeah. And Barack Obama getting uh, COVID nineteen is a good signal because people are wondering, like, okay, there's a lot of Ukraine stuff, but what about COVID? What's going on? With COVID? Like, we just forget about COVID. Like, when people Barack notice. Like, don't don't worry. I'm here. I'm yeah. Barack Obama. Right. And I got COVID now. And this is Obama is a is signal that can break through the noise. You know, he's a big enough figure, a beloved enough figure that what he can break through the static and be like, yeah, COVID's still here. I yeah. got it. And uh, but I'm vaccine boosted, so go ahead and do the same thing. It's interesting about the, the, just the timing of playing the Obama card is interesting, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, let's move on here and let's talk about this Washington Post uh, article that's accompanied by a video here, a transcript of the Washington Post subscriber exclusive Albert Borla author moonshot inside Pfizer's nine month race to make the impossible possible is a sit down interview with Pfizer CEO. And there was this uh, interesting exchange here between the interviewer and Albert Borla. You, you write that, um, it was quote, most counterintuitive to go the MRNA route. And yet you went that route. Explain why. It was counterintuitive because Pfizer was mastering, or let's say we had very good experience and expertise with the multiple technologies that could uh, give a vaccine. Adenoviruses, that some of the other vaccines are. We, we were very good in doing that. Um, protein vaccines, we were very good in doing that, and plus many other technologies. Um, the mRNA was the technology, but we had less experience, only two years working on this. And actually, mRNA was a technology that never delivered a single product until that day. Hey, we've been saying that uh, for like a Not time. vaccine, not mm -hmm. any other medicine. So, uh, so it was very counterintuitive, and I was surprised when they suggested to me that this is the way to go. And I questioned it, uh, and I asked them to justify how can you say something like that. But they came and they were very, very convinced that this is the right way to go. They felt that the two years that, uh, of war on mRNA since 2018, together with BioNTech, to uh, develop a flu vaccine, uh, made them believe that the technology is mature and we are at the cusp of uh, delivering a product. Um, so they convinced me. I, I follow my instinct that uh, they know what they are saying. They're very good. And uh, we made this a very difficult decision. 
So there you go. Very uh, difficult decision. Something interesting is <laughs> is just a visual thing, but at the very end, the door behind him it opens mysteriously and then closes mysteriously. <laughs> I don't know if that was a tap on the shoulder from one of the handlers or something. I wonder if he's. It looks like he's at his house or something. Yeah, sure. I'd um, be his kid. Yeah, uh, but very interesting that you know, he keeps referring to they. You know, they mm -hmm. came and they were convinced. And I, so I was looking at the transcript and I was trying to dig out like who's they, and it's not that clear. It, it seems like it. It's like colleagues and and um, you know, like partners or something. It was something along very those lines. Very vague, huh? Super vague. And yeah. so, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I think he has handlers. Clearly, he wasn't in on the whole technology and he questioned it it's yeah. interesting that he would even say that now it's kind of like what are you getting ready are you sort of uh hedging against some of the th the negative things that may come out long term yeah why why is this even a discussion yeah like why i was so hesitant i was very skeptical mm -hmm. about the mrna mm -hmm. because there had been no product ever come to market <laughs> and mrna yes we're wondering the same thing albert yeah uh and he's like yes but they told me this is what we are going to do they if convinced me it's like convinced me how? Like, how do they convince you yeah. I wrote a book. Read book. I think very that's what sketchy. the point is. Very, very sketchy. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's all part of his book, Moonshot, Inside mm. Pfizer's Nine Month Race to Make the Impossible Possible. So oh, geez. I think he's definitely still towing the other side. He's just, you know, he's it's reaching out. It's a good out. timing, though. Good timing on the book to sort of solidify the, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. What the, 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 not quite the narrative. There's just sort of like the the loyalty, mm. the Pfizer loyalty as the data is coming out and there's inconsistencies in their study data and the, the crimes are starting to sort of be uh, brought into the light. A good time to sort of solidify his base and write a book about the miracle of <laughs> what we did in nine months don't forget about it and d d ignore all the, the data and the FOIA requests and everything <laughs> dropping. Yeah, the uh, the other thing to mention, we do have in our show notes here a link to Frontiers in Virology and the study here, MSH3 homology and potential recombination link to SARS-CoV-2 furin cleavage site. A pretty technical term, but basically this is the paper that uh, showed that um, the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and MSH3, a uh, little part here that says a blast search of the 12-inch nucleotide insertion led us to a 100% reverse match in a proprietary sequence found mm -hmm. in the U.S. patent number 9587003 filed on February 4th, 2016. Yep. So this is an actual, this is the actual study saying, hey, we reverse engineered it. We can see that, yes, this sequence here was patented back in 2016 yeah so, this is the uh, is this the the moderna investigation or is this a separate I think this investigation i think it's moderna let me Because remember check. moderna ceo was like oh yes i have heard that the uh, covid is found in one of our patents from <laughs> but uh, we'll we be investigating into this it. yes, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll let you know yes th that that is the uh yeah it's moderna it looks like so Th this is their investigation i yeah. Well, I don't know if it's Moderna investigating. Well, that's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm wondering if this is their investigation or somebody else's mm, investigation. It looks like somebody else. Uh -huh. Department of Molecular Medicine, University of Padova, Michigan State, Morsani College, uh, Division of uh, Hematology, Oncology. Yeah, it just looks like just some scientists or whatever. Mm -hmm. They yeah, really got in there. So more of a perhaps more of an independent investigation, yeah, or which something. would make sense that they would point stuff like this out if they yeah. are a little more independent from the establishment. You know, this is a no no for the establishment, but uh, it's yeah, just interesting and maybe something to take a look at if you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, convince some normies that yeah. stuff is not what it seems. At and the very certainly, least. all all of almost all of our listeners have heard this before, but if you're kind of wondering what the heck we're talking about. Uh, came out last month that the genetic sequence for COVID-19 was found in reverse, identical but reversed, in a 2016 Moderna patent. Yeah. And uh, it was sort of so strange 
that even the Moderna CEO had to respond to it and be like, oh, I'm unaware of this, but uh, we will oh, investigate. We are looking into the claims. We'll let you know. <laughs> oh, Oops. Yeah. But it yeah. turns out this, at least this study finds that it is true. That uh, yeah. it's co coincidence. You know, it's so funny because if you're an anti sort of questioning the narrative person, if you're a narrative loyalist, you'd say, well, you know, you get an infinity amount of chimpanzees all typing on typewriters that eventually one of them will write Shakespeare. Right. And, you know, there's so much content within one single DNA strand that, yes, if you get an infinite amount of scientists patenting an infinite amount of genetic codes, oh, someday one will be identical <laughs> but reversed to a, <laughs> to the, to a the pathogen. The biggest pandemic yes. the world has ever seen. A, a history-shifting pathogen with questionable uh, provenance and, <laughs> you know, billions of dollars and elite lizard people wrapped up uh, in, in you know, the planning and handling of it. But, but so, you know, these sort of weird things happen in history. It, no. it's, okay. it's interesting that it's specifically the spike protein, though. You know, that makes it mm -hmm. all the more fascinating considering yeah, all the, the stuff we've the covered with it. Yeah, the number one, like the, the most important mechanism of COVID right. is the one <laughs> that, was, that was in the past. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not a very good look for no. uh, people trying to, you know, keep the original <laughs> narrative alive. I wonder if that was part of convincing Borla, you know, the Pfizer CEO. It's like, hey, look, we have the, the, the patent. Yeah. Like, okay, I guess it's going to work then.